afternoon. Welcome to St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church. Our opening song today is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please rise and join in singing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our coming Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, as we begin this season of Advent, the Lord Jesus reassures us that he comes to us over and over again in the course of our lives. Certainly at the time of our death, he comes to bring us home with him to the heavenly kingdom. But also each day, each moment of our lives, he seeks to draw ever closer to each of us so that we might open ourselves and our lives ever more fully to our coming Lord. Let us begin this Mass by first calling to mind our sins and then asking the Lord for his divine mercy. Lord, for the times that we have not recognized you as you seek to come to us each day, each moment of our lives, Lord, have mercy. Christ, for the times that we have not prepared ourselves for you and your gift of eternal life, Christ, have mercy. And Lord, for the times that we have not shown unto others your presence at work within our lives, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins, and may he bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts 
so that we fear you not. Return for the sake of your servant, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you, while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you, doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and 
the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. Our gospel reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch the gospel of the Lord. This past Thanksgiving, just two days ago, reminded me of a Thanksgiving afternoon nine years ago. At that time, my godson was eight years old. His younger sister, also my goddaughter, was six years old. So I had finished visiting with my own family. I went by the house as we had previously planned, picked them up so we could go play. Now, the only problem is that particular Thanksgiving day, it was quite cold. And of course, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon, The sun was already beginning to set. All right, so we're getting ready to leave, and the little six-year-old female decides she is going to play in short pants and short sleeves. And, of course, I said, Gabby, it is too cold out there. You're going to catch a chill. Now go put on some long pants and bring your sweater. You know what she says at age six? She says, I am not going to wear those blue jeans because they make my behind look too big. (laughs) So we go back and forth, back and forth, and finally boil down to Gabby. It's 420, it's getting dark soon. Either put on some warm clothes, or Matthew and I are going to leave. Well, guess what happened? Matthew and I went ahead and left, because she wouldn't change clothes. As we're leaving, she says, you don't love me, and I don't love you either. 
Now, you know, we can smile and giggle at little six-year-olds, but notice how often we are tempted to do the same type of thing to Almighty God. When things don't go our way, when other people hurt us, hurt our feelings, mistreat us, so often our response is, God, why are you allowing this to happen to me? For instance, Look at today's first reading, taken from chapter 63 in the book of Isaiah. Now, what had happened at that particular point in time, the Jewish people had been captive slaves in Babylon for 48 years. Now, if you read the whole story in the Bible, you find it was by utter miracle that Almighty God inspired King Cyrus of Asia, Persia, to let the Jewish people go back home and return them to their country. Almighty God worked such a powerful miracle that Cyrus was even willing to have the country of Persia, his own country, pay for the rebuilding of Israel. Almighty God had worked such a wonderful miracle for his people, not only to free them from slavery in Babylon, but return them home and make it possible for them to rebuild their country. But now, as they're doing so, they fell right back into their own selfish habits. All they cared about was themselves and only themselves. Didn't take care of each other, didn't protect each other. Because they were so disunified, didn't even practice their faith together, they became very vulnerable to different groups of raiders coming in and raiding their villages or raiding a certain part of their city. Had they just bound together and taken care of each other, that wouldn't have been a problem. But as they had done years and years before, they became so wrapped up in their own little world, their own little selfishness, they failed to live as God's family. And so that's why you hear Isaiah moaning and groaning in today's first reading. He's saying, Almighty God, why are you allowing us to be so unfaithful? Why don't you force us to take care of each other? Why don't you force us to do your will? Why don't you stop us from being so sinful? You notice what Isaiah was doing? He fell into the typical human trap of blaming Almighty God when it's actually other human beings, at times our own selves, who are to blame. You know the cure for this? Think back again to today's gospel. Remember, Jesus tells us to be on the watch always because we know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come to us. But now, first of all, Jesus is talking about the time of our death. We obviously need to be prepared. Now, the only thing is, notice how we look at death as being something that is frightening, something that we have to fear, something for which we have to be on guard constantly. All right, now, wait a minute. Pretend your best friend was coming to pick you up so the two of you could go on vacation together to your favorite place in the whole world. Would you be looking forward to that with dread? Would you be looking forward to that with fear? Or would you be fired up about it? Would you be looking forward to it and anticipating it? You could barely wait for your friend to get there and go on vacation together. Hey, when Jesus comes for us at the end of our lives, it's meant to be much, much better than a temporary vacation. Jesus is coming to take us home as long as we are ready for him, as long as we allow ourselves to commit ourselves to Almighty God, because it is in giving our lives to Almighty God that we open our lives to the coming Lord Jesus. We place ourselves, we place our lives in his hands so we can bring us safely home. Death is not something we are supposed to dread, although our society tells us otherwise. 
death is something for which we should look forward. Because it's the whole reason why Almighty God placed us here upon this earth to begin with. Now, just to prepare us for that, namely that final time when Jesus comes to take us home, notice what else he does. He seeks to come to us each day, each moment of our lives. Over and over and over again, Christ Jesus seeks to draw closer to us if only we will allow ourselves to draw closer to him. This whole death thing, it's not supposed to be an all of a sudden surprise shock. The manner in which we die might be an all of a sudden surprise shock. But the whole pattern of our lives, namely opening ourselves to receive the Lord Jesus, is something that's supposed to be taking place every day, every moment of our lives. And it's not like Jesus is sneaking up on us to come and scare us or come and find us unaware. It's that Jesus seeks to come to us over and over to prepare us, to prepare us for the whole reason why he created us to begin with namely to prepare us for his gift of eternal life. This Advent season gives us an excellent opportunity to step back, first of all to look at our lives, but also to look at our death, namely what our death is meant to be all about, making our final act of surrender to Almighty God, giving to him ourselves and our lives, so that in turn, he might give to us his own eternal life. Since it is our faith that enables us to prepare for the coming Lord Jesus, let us now join in together praying the profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Seeking to open our lives and our hearts ever more fully to the coming Lord Jesus, let us now present to his heavenly Father our prayers and our petitions. That our RCIA and RCIC inquirers who this weekend will be received into their catechumenate faith may continue to draw closer to the Lord. We pray to the Lord that this Advent season may be for all of us a time of spiritual renewal. We pray to the Lord that we will open our lives ever more fully to the coming Lord Jesus. We pray to the Lord that we, like the Corinthians of St. Paul, might not be lacking in any spiritual gift, we pray to the Lord. That God's Holy Spirit will inspire those who seek a cure for the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. 
to the special intentions requested for this evening's Mass of Sherlyn and Janet McCrory, for Ricky Gaspard, for Bishop Stanley Ott, for Marie Bro, for our own individual intentions, as well as our personal prayers of thanksgiving, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we begin this season of Advent, we ask your blessing upon ourselves and upon our Advent offering. As we pray for your blessing upon us, we also ask your blessing upon this Advent. May these four candles remind us of the four weeks of the Advent season. May the circular nature of this wreath remind us of your never-ending love, which has no beginning and has no end. Throughout this Advent season, may we draw ever closer to you as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will invite any of you who have brought your offertory donations with you to please come forward and place your gifts in any of the baskets on the front step of the sanctuary or the basket on the offertory table near the rear of the church. Blessed to you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed to you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, since these gifts of bread and wine now represent ourselves and our lives which we offer to God our Father, I ask you to pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we are claimed. The Lord Jesus seeks to come to us each day, each moment of our lives. He comes to us most deeply in and through the Holy Eucharist so that he might more fully prepare us for his gift of eternal life. We now pray that this same Lord Jesus will take our gifts of bread and wine and change these gifts of bread and wine into his own body and blood ever deepening within us his gift of new and eternal life. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gather here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and pay their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, the evangelist, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our servant, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. If we seek to open our lives ever more fully to the coming Lord Jesus, then let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, in song we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who seeks to come to us each day, each moment of every day. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I would ask those of you viewing at home and unable to receive the Blessed Sacrament sacramentally at this time to now join me in the prayer of spiritual communion. Most Holy Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. May I never be parted from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Our announcements for the coming week Church calendars for the 2021 year are still available on the table by the stained glass window in the back of the church. Feel free to take as many as you need or as many as you would like to give to others. We obviously have a abundant extra supply of calendars. Also, the December issue of The Word Among Us are also available on the tables uh, at the front and the uh, bare back of the church. Again, please free to take uh, one and bring it home with you. Use it throughout the course of this Advent season. Please do not put it back on the table, uh, but rather keep them at home so we do not risk passing the virus from one to the other. Also, we thank everyone who has participated in our annual giving tree process. A good number of gift requests still remain on the tables in the baptismal font area. Please do leave your name and phone number for any gift store you accept. And please to remember to return all gifts next Sunday, December 6th, between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. at the Activity Center. May the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our closing song this evening is Let the King of Glory Come. Please join in singing. Mm -hmm.